Go ahead, go. Get into it a little bit. There we go. All right, so today on the show, we have Mr. Dave Z here, and uh, Dave mm -hmm. is a, kind of a bummed out camper right now because Dave is from the video, and I'll post a link to this. Dave is from the video where we were pulling you out of Holly Oaks Park. And uh, first off, Dave, tell us a little bit about your Bronco. You have a base Bronco, right? I have a base Bronco, uh, 2.7 automatic transmission. Twenty? Is it a 22? Or? It's a 22, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so I know, I know the miles on this thing and I'm amazed how many miles you've already put, <laughs> put on this vehicle. Uh, what was it initially about Bronco that brought you in? Was, are you just a Ford guy or, or what's the, it was just the styling and everything. I spend a lot of time in my vehicle. It's a daily mm -hmm. driver. I use it for work and it just got to the point where it's like, man, I, I'm not going to get something that I can't turn around and look at and, and say, that's yeah. my car. And, by the time, you know, by the time I figure I'm going to do that, I'm going to be too old to appreciate it. You know, so I got <laughs> something that I appreciate now. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. And yeah. I thought the Bronco, just the styling and everything about it. It's just, uh, there's nothing, nothing else on the road like it really. Right. And I'm assuming like everybody, you had to wait for a while to get one and because they are pretty hard to come by. Well, one of the reasons I bought the base was, first of all, I was looking for a lot of no frills. I figure if it, if it's not on there, it, it can't break. So, <laughs> right. So I ordered the base, and it, you know, it. Uh, I ordered it in December, and I believe it was sometime in May. That oh wow! Wow. It was delivered, so it was it was pretty speedy. You know? Wow, that's uh. So yeah. anybody listening, order a base. It sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick turnaround. Yeah. yeah. So so we got to meet you a little bit mm -hmm. at, at Holly Oaks. Uh, the Michigan Bronco Club was having a uh, what they thought was going to be a small meetup, which turned in I think there was over eighty Broncos there. Yeah, and like one hundred and twenty something people. Yeah. And um, you were just out there doing your own thing, having fun. I mean, there was Broncos everywhere, sandy terrain. And uh, I think we saw you You were when we were doing the little hill climbs, the little sand hill climbs. Mm -hmm. I think you uh, went through there a little bit. And uh, the next thing I noticed was you were uh, across the park and um, walking towards us. Yeah. And I was like, well, that maybe he's <laughs> I, I, honestly, I just thought, well, he's stuck. Or he I thought need, maybe he was getting a picture yeah, or something, you know, yeah, you just needed a tug. But uh, kind of. Where, what were you doing and what kind of happened to, to started this whole thing? There was a small descent there. I got out. I took a look at it and I saw, you know, there were other, other, my gosh, it looked like Sasquatch tracks through there. So right. people had been up there before and um, there was a bit of a drop. Uh, and I took it. I took it. I went, I went for yeah. it. And on the descent, I got high centered. It wasn't punching it. wasn't, like I said, when went for the descent. Um as soon as the front wheels dropped, you know, I heard a I heard a clunk. Mm -hmm. Not a bad, you know, just a clunk. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to put it in reverse, see if that would do anything. And uh, yeah, it just it didn't sound. It sounded like uh, just a, a little like some grinding. But, uh, but like I said, for the amount of oh my gosh, for the uh, it, it it seemed really. I'm, I'm sorry yeah no, no for the for, for the lack of impact it didn't seem like it should have should no, have done what it no, did it was, it was unremarkable like. you know yeah, it was yeah unremarkable. Where, where you were at like like for those and i'll I'll put some video up here so everybody can see where you were at it wasn't like out of mm -mm. i would have never suspected any problems other than you could tell like it was a pretty good drop that you might get high centered a little bit yeah i would have never seen anything there because the terrain that we were going through that day was pretty loose sand i mean it, it wasn't anything that i would have ever found to uh sometimes people break the tie mm -hmm. rods and stuff when they're in this this rock conditions and the wheels start spinning real fast and then they just they get traction and it stops and it just sends all the energy through the vehicle there was nothing that I saw mm -hmm. from from our vantage point that it would I would have ever thought this would. It have was happened. a smidge more rocky over where he was, but nothing we've not yeah. accomplished before, yeah. and we not nothing we've broken on before. Which yeah. is again, when I saw you coming over, that's what I thought too. Is that you just needed a little tug because you got a little high centered and yeah. whatever. But yeah, I didn't expect it to return and in, or turn into a full recovery mode of of, of getting you off that hill and taking you all the way up to the front i i hated it broke our hearts i'll be honest we were hoping that maybe we could just get you off and then you could get back to the parking lot on your own movements and yeah. everything else and 
Ooh. for a second there, I was worried that we weren't even going to get you off there because it just kind of acted like it didn't want to really do much right even when and, we showed up and so so we got over there and there was a couple guys in some raptors i know one was a ford person and mm -hmm. i will say there's been a few cases that we've heard of these transfer cases freaking out where they um they don't know where they're like wanting to change from four high to four low or it just mm -hmm. doesn't know where it's at and even the ford exec there was like he knew about that you could tell yeah. and, and he was like oh you know we'll get it on flat ground it'll it'll adjust it'll adjust and, and go and i remember hearing just like like when we we of course we tug you and you can see in the video where we kind of tug you down and i personally thought well it's it's just gonna it's just it was binding somehow like maybe the drive shaft was, was catching on some soil or something it just didn't like it and like you said you heard a pop and um yeah we looked under the vehicle there was no signs of sometimes if a differential breaks the case breaks you'll see the fluid just come mm -hmm. out of the vehicle there was nothing in, on your vehicle that i would have ever suspected to uh to do this and i'm gonna pop this picture up now if you can see the transfer case like it's just like a grenade went off in mm -hmm. this thing right dave yeah yeah and that's the thing it was there was no the transfer case didn't look like it had any any yeah, mud on it or anything it did it looked like it 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 was clear so yeah yeah i remember awesome. we were looking for some loose what well maybe something got unplugged mm -hmm. and when we got it on flat ground but we we pulled you out and unfortunately we had to uh pull you all the way to the parking lot mm -hmm. because we tried everything we tried to just kind of push it rock the thing trying to get the transfer case to uh to Same maybe gauge. shift and i i called my buddy luke with lifestyle off-road who mm -hmm. had something similar happen where his just decided it it just kind of goes into a limp mode and he said he had to turn his vehicle on and off a few times and kind of just play with the goat modes to get mm -hmm. it to shift properly. And he said, then it just does its thing and, and, uh, and then doesn't do it again. Yeah. So we get you out to the, uh, the front of the park and you've got, for one, there's nothing, there's always <laughs> assumed risk with off-roading, unfortunately. And it bit, it bit you on this one. Um, but we get you to the parking lot and you've got to make that dreaded call. I'm assuming to home, let them know <laughs> I might be a little bit late, right? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, it, we arranged, uh, arranged with the, uh, the wrecker there to take me to the dealership where I purchased yeah. it. And, right. Which is, it's kind of part of the problem. So you get it there and I know everybody's having a little mm -hmm. hard time getting it, like getting things serviced and, you know, there's long wait times. And so you get it to there. And I remember you, you text me and said, Hey, uh, there's nobody at this dealership that that knows how to handle this, right? Or what? There was no tech specialist. Oh, well, yeah, we got it there Saturday night. And the uh, it's actually the uh, the wrecker had to bounce it off the back of the of his yeah. truck that night. It wouldn't roll. Wouldn't oh roll wow! Anymore. I mean, is we? I guess we. I was lucky. I had you guys in. So it sounds like it was lucky that we were able to even get you rolling to the parking lot. Yeah. Then that's yep. crazy. Exactly. I mean, he he bounced off the record there in the lot, and uh, I went back the next day and tried the uh, the tow, putting it into the tow the yeah. And yeah, it just didn't want to cooperate. Um, but then Monday morning, Monday six thirty in the morning, the, the service department from that dealership called, and we don't have a trans tech, so. Oh no! Wow. Had to tow it to another. Have it towed oh. to another place. So had it towed to, um, I guess, in the Oakland County area here. There, the Ford Transtex are in short order. There, uh, I think he said there's only three of them. Oh so, wow! In all the dealerships. So um, I towed it to the uh, the next geographically closer uh, lot, and I wasn't there. I was working, so I did sure. this all through the uh, the Ford Pass app. And I guess the wrecker, the, the second wrecker picked up my truck and he got it to the uh, the next dealership. He, however, dropped it off in a red zone, uh -oh. a no parking zone. Oh, oh no. <laughs> on oh, the no, street, I did not know this. On the street. It was uh, in Ferndale. It's Woodward, just north uh -huh. of 8 Mile. Um, it's the, <laughs> we were actually there for um, Dream Cruise. Yeah. Dream we Cruise. Yeah, Dream it's a little, a little is south of where the uh the bronco the corral was yeah. bronco nation's corral it's a little south mm -hmm. of that a little, little closer to uh, but it was right at the corner of woodward and a side street again in a in a basically a no parking zone oh, um, man. so i'm assuming a ticket 
Uh, well, I, I asked the guys, and they, they said they tried to move it, and they're like, your car won't move. I'm like, I know it won't move. They, you know, <laughs> it's the whole point That's of it. That's why I'm here. here. Yeah. Apparently, they didn't have any dollies or anything to put under the wheels. They, had to, you know, they said, we'll get it taken care of. We'll get it taken care of. But I drove by the next day. And it was out uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, it was out there. Um, this, that was the morning. So I, I called up. You know, I don't feel too good about having my vehicle out on the street in sure. no part. You know, I can't believe the guy would have dropped it off there. That's, you know, we'll get it taken care of. And well, again, Wednesday, I finally I drove by. It was still in the same spot. This time, it had the drive shaft, <laughs> the drive shaft hanging down on the bottom. So they had tried to. You know, they were trying to move it then. Trying to move it. They were trying to move it, but I got there and I said, "You guys, please can't leave this on the right. street right now." But you know, so. Um, I actually ended up helping them, helping them push it in. Oh, wow. You know, they had a pusher, but yeah, they, they took the drive shaft off, but finally they, they pushed it into the building after. So, so that, I'm assuming they, they, um, they probably tried to pull some codes on this thing. I'm assuming. And, um, cause you didn't really get anything on your dash that would have, would have made me think of anything was wrong. Right. The, uh, the Sunday afterwards, I did get a, a check engine light did okay. come on and I figured, yeah, it's probably, you know, probably had enough. You know, so. Yeah. Do you ever uh, check the code in the app? Did it give you get, did it give you an alert? It, in the app? App, nothing is showing up on my app on the Ford Pass. App. Weird. I know. Huh. Except That's interesting. I, you know, I air down my tires every day. I get a, a notice for my tires. Yeah. <laughs> down, but nothing about the code. So. So strange because I we have gotten I don't know that we've gotten a code, but I've heard of people getting the code notices. Oh no, we have with the like hill start yeah. hill start assist and things like that. Like I'll get yeah. flashes on the dash sometimes and it'll freak out and I get a code I get a I get a pop to that, but I've not wow, that's crazy to think that it didn't shoot you the code. Right. So they 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 I'm assuming they've somehow they knew to go to the transfer case. I'm assuming once they pulled the drive shafts, they knew something in between the transmission in there was not allowing it to turn. So they, right. they dropped that transfer case and send you that picture, right? Or did you take that picture? Oh, they took, they sent the picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice, and, and you know what kind of stinks is there's no, so if this thing wasn't rolling, mm -hmm. there's now you've got to look at, okay, well, there was a tow company that could have done more damage by trying to get it on the right. vehicle the way they've done. Or when, when these people were trying to move it, you know, there's, there's a lot of like fuzziness there, but right. so they, they sent you that picture. And obviously, as you guys can see here, this thing is, it's devastating uh, that it just basically looks like it exploded on the inside of this thing. And so what did, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this thinking, okay, it's warranty work something something within that transfer case caught you know failed and uh what was what was the dealerships uh what did they kind of let you know uh well the they said that it was uh, used off-road where <laughs> in a manner that it shouldn't have been being used uh, and so, the, the so dealership, and, oh, go ahead you know so a dealership literally has a off-road vehicle and I mean, it's not one of these things where like the alternator went out and you go, okay, it just got filled with mud you right. know, and the little thing like that. Right. This is, and I, you don't seem strike me as a person that you're out there every weekend off-roading. Like this is probably just an every so often thing you go and, and you were doing it. The, the vehicle does not show, in my opinion, any kind of abuse, mm -mm. some dirt on it from sand. You know, we were in that sandy terrain, but I, I can't believe that they would t tell you that uh, an off-road vehicle that it was abused. Yeah was used off-road and incurred yeah. damages off-road <laughs> so, which is basically what the, the the customer service caseworker told me that you know. right so did they reach out to ford then i mean obviously techs are the first in line they they see mm -hmm. it and they make an assumption did they reach out to ford about this for warranty? i don't know if they filed i, I think they filed a claim i think they just said that it you know you know this guy you know, well my tech immediately like i said he accused me of driving in four low and yeah. I said, dude, I, yes, it was in four low, but I never exceeded, like, I never exceeded, like, over, you know, kept it between 15 and 20 miles an hour going from obstacle to obstacle. And then he's right. Because like, it's, it's not going to be low. One thing, I drove through that big puddle mm -hmm. that was in four high, but I was I going to detail the car, the, the, the truck the next day. 
And I was going to fluid film underneath. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go through that puddle because I'm going to walk right tomorrow. And oh my gosh, I, that's the worst thing. Everybody's just like, well, look at all the water. You know, you, <laughs> you're you driving through puddles. It's not a boat. You can't, you know, this is <sighs> right. It's like, oh. I, I it's never, water forging. Yeah, he never says he has a certain capability. Right. It's like no, no, no. But you know, he's like, well, you were obviously, you know, you're obviously, you know, driving. You know, it's like I, I put it in four high, and I, I splashed through a big puddle. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Right, which is not going to cause your transfer case to explode. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, no. Well, but and even at that, so I, I can't remember off. Off the top of my head, but I know the transfer case in four, I, 25 miles an hour. There's some, there is a, a maximum speed yeah. to it, but you also know when you're in four low like that, it doesn't want to go any faster. So it's not right. like yeah. I did not see you out there by any means, like dune racing. Like you, you were just drive, driving like you were at a mall kind of to the next obstacle. And just did kinda... you just mall crawl well, from I mean, one yeah. obstacle I mean, to well, another it wasn't like yes. it was racing, racing no i just thought each. it was funny your reference right. i don't mean it as a mall crawler <laughs> but but there was nothing i mean i we've seen you several times in that day there was nothing in my opinion mm -mm. that would make me for one the tech shouldn't tell you they shouldn't talk to you that way for one because they're a tech they're mm -hmm. there to service the vehicle at no point and i will say this being a new ford product an off-road product i'm sure 99 percent of the techs have no clue about off-roading about the capability of this vehicle or past oil changing and some light servicing to these vehicles right. this is all new territory for them so i would think they would be your number one thing to push for forward warranty and be like hey guys i didn't really see any there's no right. signs of like because when you look under the vehicle like other than i saw in your gas tank you know there was some dirt and some scratches but that just happens anyways mm -hmm. um, yeah. it wasn't like i there was nothing under that vehicle in my opinion where it looked like you just were out there abusing it no no i'm very careful with that vehicle i, I love that vehicle mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I, uh, but uh but yeah again I, like I, sh I showed the tech the beginning of that video and he's like mm -hmm. that that terrain you should be driving in four high there's no way you know you it's only in loose sandy soil or you should not be trail riding in four low and i'm like really wasn't trail riding in four yeah. low was, and, and honestly i i wish there were in a sense it's like i wish i was driving in four low then there'd be a reason for it and i i wouldn't feel apprehensive about taking it out again after they fix yeah. it because Right. I can't. I don't. I don't feel like going up to Drummond Island. And, yeah. And tooling around on Drummond Island if I'm going to get high centered somewhere, which you know. Yeah. Now you're stung by it, so it's like, ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, right. Well, so they sent it off to Ford Warranty. Ford Warranty. I guarantee you, their first thing is going to deny it. That's just what. That's what any warranty right. company usually does. They just go nope. So they should be your advocate. Instead, it sounds like they're mm -hmm. like a problem in the line of problems that you're having. And this is, this is why I wanted to talk to you because I, I feel like, you know, dealerships get a lot of bad names sometimes and, and sometimes it's warranted. Sometimes it's not, but in this case, I feel like the, the tech department who, who makes money on this, it's mm -hmm. not like any warranty work. They, they get paid by Ford to fix these things. And it just sounds like they almost don't want to fix your vehicle for you. Oh, well, they want to fix it, but it, going to cost quite a bit <laughs> yeah like, right you're right. right and i know you you suggested upwards of four thousand dollars for a transfer case four thousand dollars and wow they're telling me they don't know when they don't know when they can get the, the part but they want to get the whole <sighs> the whole transfer case so man so basically right now the vehicle is just sitting there and you're you're kind of in limbo of like hey ford come you should at minimum because i know you've called the hotline and been like, right. hey, you know, there's a case on this, obviously. Um, where do you feel like the next step is? I mean, where what do you feel like? I mean, are you just like, great, now I got to come up with four grand? Or are you like, hey, Ford, I'm still waiting on Ford maybe to to handle this? Well, I, I, I've already contacted them once. I thought I'd give them another, you know, give them another shot. But they're, it's, you know, the, the last rep I talked to. I asked her, I said, is there anyone else I could talk to? And she said that she was fully authorized to make these calls. And, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, frankly, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like right. I said, I feel like because because of the 
the pick, you know, you'd, you'd see the transfer case. I'm, I'm the guy with the smoking gun. <laughs> and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, right. How could that happen? You know, the only way there's only one way that could happen. And that's, you know, you're... yeah, something failed within that. And like I said earlier, there's, I, there was nothing we saw that you mm -hmm. abused that vehicle at any point. Um, well, I, I definitely, I definitely uh, hope Ford, you know, does the right thing here. It's not like they're going to want that transfer case. Engineering is going to want that no matter what. And I Regardless, yes, they're going to want it. I guarantee you they're shipping that off so mm -hmm. they can examine what failed in that thing. But uh, I, I really do hope they do the right thing for you in this situation mm -hmm. because, you know, there was a lot of people early on breaking these things where it was abuse. There was a guy in Indiana that was just abusing the vehicle, slid it into mud and stuff. <laughs> ruined his vehicle and that's where yeah that's your fault and there was video evidence of the guy just clearly abusing it but in your case right. there's nothing there and I, mm -hmm. I really do feel like this is one thing where ford needs to make this right for you and and hopefully they do and um quickly too but like like you said obviously we're coming out of the pandemic it's just i know there's uh, parts issues but mm -hmm. they're out there let's not act like there's no transfer cases out there and I'm assuming there's probably even used transfer cases out there now because some of these vehicles have been wrecked. They're being salvaged now. We know of um, at least like three of them that have been totaled yeah. that didn't have transfer case issues. So, yeah. or yes. knowingly. <laughs> so, so Dave, I hope, I hope we shine some light on this for you tonight. And uh, guys in the comments below, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, guys, share this thing. Let's get Mike Levine involved in this. Uh, obviously, he's just a PR guy for Ford, but he does have a uh, – he can send this thing higher. I do feel like uh, some Ford people I know should be involved in this and really – kind of get the word out because it's it, yes it's a new vehicle things are you know there's some uncertainty with some new vehicles mm -hmm. like this and that's why they should stand behind this and uh in my opinion take care of us what do you think Kelly? well and let's keep in mind that there unfortunately dave's not the only one out there we know of one other person that was mm -hmm. driving down the road and it, and the vehicle came to a dead stop yeah and wasn't in four four wheel drive so there's something going on here that we need to figure it out and Ford needs to figure it out and get to the bottom of it and take care of their people because you're still under warranty. So we need, we need to get this taken care yeah. of for sure. So guys, once again, in the comments below, uh, help me share this video more than anything else. I, it's not for us profiting off of it. I just want to see Ford do this right by this mm -hmm. gentleman and, uh, get his, get his vehicle fixed. So, uh, in the comments, you know what to do. Uh, come on, Bronco Nation, Bronco Army. Uh, let's help. Let's help Dave Z out here and uh, get this thing. So whether it be two wheel drive, four wheel drive, is it really? It, well, Dave's well, it not, does Dave's matter. Dave's not driving one. right now. <laughs> no wheel drive. Stabbing poor Dave in the side. I know. This has been your All Terrain Nation. I'm your host, David Boyd. We're out. Peace, everybody. See ya.